What is up with the Black Lives Matter agenda? Hello, everybody. Steve here with another video. And today we're going to be talking about Black Lives Matter, the Black Lives Matter agenda. And I would like to ask you as a person, as a Christian, and you don't have to be a Christian to, to listen to this, but this particular quest, question I'm addressing to Christians, black Christians, white Christians, Christians of any culture, are you justified or are, do you feel justified in supporting Black Lives Matter? And what we're going to do today is we're going to read Black Matter, Black Lives Matter agenda right from their website, which is blacklivesmatter.com. It is there for everyone to see. And I'm not going to read all of them. I think there's about maybe 10 or more specific points that they bring. But I'm going to read some that might help you answer the question that I just posed a few minutes ago. So let me uh, start. And once again, you can read this just so you know that I'm you know, not making this up. You can read this yourselves at blacklivesmatter.com. And I'm going to just uh, read a, a few of them. Uh, this is one that I'm going to read every day. And I quote, every day we recommit to healing ourselves and each other and to be co-creating alongside comrades, allies, and family, a culture where each person feels seen, heard, and supported. And that sounds good. You know, I have no no real problem uh, with that. Maybe just some of the words that they choose to use, like comrades, because we know that the founders of Black Lives Matter have already claimed to be Marxists. And if you know anything about Marxism, especially the Marxist revolutions uh, in Russia and China and other places, the word comrades is used to denote somebody who is an adherent to Marxism. So just wanted to, to throw that in there, knowing that Black Lives Matter is at its core a Marxist movement. Uh, let me continue. We work vigorously for freedom and justice for black people and by extension, all people. And that sounds good, too. Um, but here in America, I think that black people are already free. I mean, I can speak for myself and say that I'm a free person. Uh, I can do anything. Nothing ha it has stopped me from doing anything in life that I ever wanted to do. So I'm free. And I'm hoping that if you're listening to this, you're free, too, if you're listening to listening to this in the United States of America. And but it also says by extension, all people. And that's good because we should be encouraged to see freedom reign in America, not just for black people, but for white people, for everybody. We want to be free. And that's one of the founding principles of our nation is that we are a free people. And that we are able to make decisions for our own selves and have the freedom to do the things that we need to do in this life. OK, let me uh, read another one. We see ourselves as part of the global black family, and we are aware of the different ways we are impacted or privileged as black people who exist in different parts of the world. And in principle, I have no problem with this one. I think that what they're just saying is that black people from all over the world can and should band together for good things. At least I hope that's what they mean here. And that we are indeed privileged by God to live in this country. I don't know if they would attest to that, but if you really look at it, uh, the black, black people here in America, we are blessed by God to have the freedom and the ability to do just about anything. It wasn't always like that, of course. Many things we, we had to fight for. We were, we are the ancestors, many of us are ancestors of slaves. Many of us, uh, black people in America, immigrated to, 
here freely, but many of us are descendants of, of slaves and we have to fight. And by God's grace, with the culmination of the civil rights movement in the 60s, by God's grace, he allowed us to to attain our full freedom and our full rights to participate 100 percent in American life here in this country. And for that, we should be grateful to God. All right, let me read some more of them. And these are the ones that I really have an issue with. We make space for transgender brothers and sisters to participate and lead. Now, with this one, now let me say first that just because I don't agree with something or just because I don't agree with a personal choice you may have, it doesn't mean that I hate you. It doesn't mean that I even dislike you. It, it doesn't mean any of those things. What it means is that I have a belief system that disagrees with a foundational principle that you might hold dear to you. And so is the case with this one when it, in regards to uh, transgender. Now I'm, now, I'm wondering why is this a part of, of the Black Lives Matter agenda when this really has nothing to do with black lives, so to speak. This is more a societal issue that covers, I would think that that covers people of all colors, shape, sizes, whatever. But it's thrown in here into the uh, Black Lives Matter movement. Why? Because I think that they want to uh, form alliances with different groups and different agendas and different movements. So as to become more powerful, that's what I think. And then the next one says, we are self-reflective and we do the work required to dismantle cisgender privilege and uplift black trans folks, especially black trans women, who continue to be disproportionately impacted by trans antagonistic violence. Now, there's a lot in this one. So let me kind of break it down sentence by sentence. It says, we do the work required to dismantle cisgender privilege. So you might be asking yourself, you might not know all of these new terms. What is cisgender? Cisgender is just another term for a straight man or a straight woman, a traditional man or woman. And from a Christian worldview, the Bible tells us that God created male and female, man and woman, and that the man and woman would come together as husband and wife and have a child. The two should become one flesh when they get married, and then they will be fruitful and multiply. That's what the Bible says. But here, one of the agendas of the Black Lives Matter movement is to dismantle the idea that marriage is between a man and a woman and that a man and a woman is a traditional form of a family. So why, my friends, would the Black Lives Matter group want to do that when one of the things that is so destructive in the Black community is the lack of fathers in the home? It seems to go against what is the best thing for black people. And the best thing for black people is to have a mother and father at home raising their kids and working together toward common goals of the family. And from the family unit, a strong family unit will usually produce strong children who are good and productive members of society. And that's been proven. But it appears that one of the agendas of Black Lives Matter is to, to uh, dismantle that whole notion that men and women are the best situation that, uh, for a family uh, to have kids. So let's go to the next sentence. Black trans folks, especially black trans women. Now, let me just explain to you what a black trans woman is. A black trans woman is someone that was born a man and has transitioned or is in the process of transitioning into being a woman. And if you look, if you look at the, the definition of a black trans woman, I'll say is that a black trans woman is a person who was assigned at birth as a male. They were assigned at birth as a male. Now, to me, that doesn't make sense that you have the ability to assign somebody a sex at their birth when it is pretty uh, uh, when it's pretty evident when the baby comes out whether it is a boy or a girl so it is not assigned it is a fact of nature it is god's created way of uh bringing a person in into the world either male or female you don't decide when a person is born 
that if he has the male anatomy, you don't decide and say, oh, well, this person is actually a girl or I'm not going to assign a sex to it. I'm going to let it, him or her, you know, they don't even like you using him or her. I'm going to let it decide what it wants to be when it gets a little older. This really doesn't make any sense to me. And it goes against everything that we we sense and everything that we hold dear and everything that that is just plain to the eye to see. OK, I'm just going to read a few more of these and then give my overall take on it. And then that'll be it. So listen to this one. We make our spaces family friendly and enable parents to fully participate with their children. We dismantle the patriarchal practice that requires mothers to work double shifts so that they can mother in private, even as they participate in public justice work. I'm not really sure what they mean by this one, other than the fact that they want to dismantle what they perceive as the patriarchal practice. And that simply means that men traditionally have always been the head of the household, not the dictator, not the absolute ruler, but the figurative head of the household. And therefore, in the family structure, like I just was telling you before, you have man, woman, child, and that is the family unit. And in each unit, there is one that is responsible for the overall health and welfare of the family. And that has always traditionally been uh, the man. That doesn't mean that the woman is any less or that the woman is not an important and equal and worth and value uh, to the man. They just have different roles. That's all. We just have different roles. But once again, Black Lives Matter seeks to, to, to tear everything down, tear everything down from our Christian heritage and to encourage mothers and to basically, you know, be autonomous in, in everything that they do and not to look to uh, a, a man in any regard, um, not so much for material well-being, but especially for the spiritual well-being. A Christian man should lead his family in prayer. He should lead his man, uh, his family in going to church. He should be the one who is encouraging right and righteousness in the family and also demonstrating that to his family as well. Okay, two more and I'm done. Now listen to this one. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. So what is this? Western prescribed nuclear family structure. Now, I just mentioned to you before, and it's like they are reiterating this point from one of the previous points, um, that they want to disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure, which is what I just told you, a, a man, a woman, and children. So for countless generations, centuries, thousands and thousands of years, this was the prescribed family structure that everyone just instinctively knew was the right way. But they want to disrupt that. But it's not that they're disrupting a Western prescribed nuclear family. They are disrupting a biblically mandated Christian worldview family structure that was prescribed by God himself. So in this statement, they are basically opposed to how God describes a family, how God wants a family to, to be run. So I ask you, and I'm going to ask you again at the end of this, is this something that... Uh, as a Christian person, is this something that you can ascribe to? Here's the next one. We foster a queer affirming network. When we gather, we do so with the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of heteronormative thinking, or rather the belief that in the world are heterosexual unless he or she, he, she, or they disclose otherwise. So what they're saying here is, and they use a lot of uh, words that you might not have heard of heteronormative. That's just a person who thinks like I would say 95% of the world that male and female are the only two sexes, are the only two genders. But that is considered something that is not to be, uh, uh, not to be espoused. They don't want you to think that way. And therefore they come up with these different terms to describe 
what the normal way, a God-given way is of thinking. So just like I mentioned to you, cisgender is another way of saying a regular man and woman thinking. Um, heteronormative is what most people operate under the assumption and operate in their lives as, but they have to come up with these different kinds of words to describe it, to make it, and then to tear it down because they don't agree with that. So I think I'll stop there. There are a few more here that I wanted to talk about, but I think that's enough uh, for today. But I just wanted you to get a taste of some of the things that they're affirming in Black Lives Matter. And, you know, what's what's funny to see is that if you read the first few of them, you could probably say, OK, you know, I'm with that. I, I can I can dig that. You know, the first few seem to be something that's pretty much all of us want, that it's pretty inclusive of, of all people. But as you keep reading, they really get into the nitty gritty of what they're fighting for. So I ask you as a person, as a Christian, can you agree with the majority of what we were talking about here? And if you can, if you can say, all right, I still support Black Lives Matter, I still still support their agenda, then I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't know it's not like they are trying to hide what their agenda is. It's not like they're trying to camouflage it. It's not like they're trying to pull one over on most people. They're pretty adamant about what they, they want to uh, put forth. They're pretty adamant about what they want or where they want the culture to turn. But unfortunately, this is not the Christian way. As a matter of fact, the Bible never really even speaks of race the way we do today. The Bible speaks of there being different cultures, but there's only one race. We're all a part of the human race, whether black, whether white, Asian, whatever your ethnicity is. We are all one race, all created by God. And if we are all created by God, we are equal in the sight of God. And with the founding of the church, we see if we look in the book of Acts and we understand church history, that there was a coming together of different peoples. Why? To worship the one true God. And what it, what it did was dismantle all of the differences between all the ethnicities that were in the ancient world 2,000 years ago. And these same ethni ethnicities are, are here in the world today. So rather than the church bringing people together, we're, we find ourselves embroiled as the church in the midst of this racial war, in the midst of this division, in the midst of this segregation, where we should be doing the exact opposite, my friends. We, in the church, we even, if you listen to people talk, we bring the language of, of this even into the church, where if we're talking about people from different eth ethnicities, we'll say, oh yeah, well that white brother, or you know that black brother, or that Asian sister, why can it not just be brother and sister? Why do we have to to divide people based on their ethnicity when we are talking about them or when we are communicating about it? That language shouldn't even be a part of the church. So that's my uh, that's my rant today on Black Lives Matter. I wanted to just bring you some some of this information that you might already know. But if you don't, I want you to go to the Black Lives Matter website and read it for yourself to know that I'm not just making this up. And I want you to really continue to ask, your question, ask the question to yourself whether you can fully support Black Lives Matter based on what I just told you. That's something that you need to search for within yourself and ask God if you can get with the program of Black Lives Matter. I can't myself, but uh, you have to ask that question for yourself. So God bless you. I love you guys. Please continue to support us. Please do subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified when there's new videos. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section because we like your feedback. We like to understand uh, what it is that you get from uh, these, these uh, shows. And most importantly, pray for us that we can keep going and, and providing content to you that we hope is useful. So God bless you, and I'll see you next time.